probably, two, in my opinion, two reasons. One, obviously, the, the money in the Premier League will keep our best players here because there's massive wages, so our very best ones will stay here rather than go abroad um, because the, the finances do dictate a, a lot of it for a lot of people. But I also feel that we don't develop our own players anyway, so, you know, we, we kind of, because we're importing so many, people aren't getting a chance. If you if you had a really talented kid and people have asked me loads of times, where should I put this kid, where should I go with this one? And if you look to any of the clubs, it's not really picking any of them. If you look to any of the London clubs, Chelsea, Arsenal, Tottenham, the big ones, where are they, where exactly are they going to break through? You know, very, very little opportunity of, of coming through. So therefore, if they're not going to come through there, you know, um, they're not going to get put in the shop window. And that those opportunities abroad, I think, you know, need to be expanded for them. The Premier League now is seen as the only league, and that's not the case at all. Whereas you, you rightly say everyone used to at one stage want to go to Italy. If you could get them playing in Italy, that, that would be great. So, so now I think people need to look outside the box of the Premier League, especially as so many players are coming into it from abroad and thinking, well, where can we make a career? And, and the door's always open. You can come back. It doesn't mean that you've gone forever. You, if you do well abroad, you'll, you'll, you'll get spotted there and, and your opportunities may come to come back anyway. If you could, I would, I would go for the usual suspects really. I'd go for Holland, France, Germany, Italy and Spain, or any of the Scandinavian countries. There's a lot of people who have made good going to the Scandinavian countries. Uh, I think it's still a little bit of an untapped market. I think it's, it's still an expanding uh, football market as well. Um, English speaking, a lot of the people there, the vast majority, you, you'll get by speaking the language. Um, they follow the English game as well, so I think it's just very accepted going in now. America's a great option, like say the MLS or, or the a leagues and the college football. All, all of that, I think, are good, good opportunities for them. In Russia as well. Huge opportunities now in Russia coming up, um, a whole lot of money there, so money will equal development hopefully and growth of the game now, and then they'll be looking to get players in as well. Um, another place a lot of players have gone uh, as well is Turkey, so that's another good opportunity, good strong league, good structure. So there are, there are places, and I'm sure as you say there's some untapped places as well and opportunities. But it's, but it's having the contacts for these players and it's, it's getting them in that shop window. Well, you give the message it's certainly not too late and there are more opportunities now if you know where to go. I suppose um, if you look at years ago, you, you kind of didn't have those opportunities, whereas now with, with, with you know, what you're doing and other, other opportunities for them to maybe go abroad, you know, the world's a smaller place now, so opportunities are opening up all the time. And look at that example of Luar Luar who who came through from never being at a junior academy. Now that's a story and a half, never signed by anyone up to 16. Hadn't played, so really that's, that, that's a massive story. There's other, there's other people as well, other well-known people like Ian Wright who came through from, from Sunday football into being one of the best strikers of all time. So you can, you can get through, but you've got to persevere with it and you've got to keep going. As well as the obvious stuff, which is, which is the football inability, you, you, you can't make it without the right mindset. So. You can be, you know, you could be the most gifted player, but if you don't want to do it, and you don't want to train, and you don't want to improve, and you don't want to put the work in, then you won't get that. I've put players forward for different clubs, and, and they've ended up going on to do different things, and, and again, end up um, playing for, for professional teams, so that's that's obviously good. But you, there's other, the other side of the coin is that you, you put them forward, and not everyone agrees with you. And there are quite a few stories that I could but can't tell. <laughs> on that line but you know not everyone agrees and not everyone makes it and that's what makes football so interesting as well and that's why there's opportunities well just because someone said no that doesn't mean the next person's not going to think wow yes you know, it's the same with all of us and football's very much about opinions and just because you've been released that doesn't mean that's the end of you at all i've just always done it i guess really and i still still love it I still watch it so even when it's not your club when Liverpool came back and won that European Cup from 3 0 down, I think you know, England beat Germany 5 1. They're all big moments, not just in football, they're, they're big moments in your life that you remember forever, really. So I suppose it's that, waiting for those big moments. On another personal note, I would definitely have more technology involved. I think that every other sport has got it, it's just like burying your heads in the sand. I, I, I'm up for all of it, to be honest with you. Hawkeye, a lot of flags coming on the pitch, bring it on. 
I've spoke to Roy Hodgson, he's come to a few events for the London Football Coaches Association, he's, he's very committed to coaching and, and, he, and, he, and I'm sure he'll continue to do that even though he's now England manager, I think that's a, that's a real mark of his commitment to coaching. So I, I think it's a good appointment, Roy's got so much experience, um, the stuff that he's done abroad really pioneering because you know, for our coaches to go and work abroad when he did you know, and manage, manage teams like Inter Milan and national teams and got the Swiss national team to a world ranking of number three at one stage, which is which is just outstanding. So, so I'm hoping that, that he'll do good things, but what, what he'll be constrained with by anyone is, is players as an international manager. You can't go into the transfer market and you can't buy someone that you fancy, so you, you've got what you've got. And I think that's, that's, that's the juggling act, really. Um, I think our, our golden period passed us by uh, when Beckham, Gerrard and Lampard were all at their absolute very best. I think that all you know, people are now looking through. This could be a little bit too early, I think. For but if the press leave him alone and, and this is used as a learning curve, then perhaps not for not for the Brazil, but for the the next one after that. I think that's that's the one to to target. You need to prepare properly if, you, if you're going to come and have a go at this. That that, that is. The whole that is the whole deal. You need to be physically fit. You need to be mentally right. You need to be eating properly. You need to be training hard. You don't need to be overtraining. Your rest days are absolutely vital on a training program, as as vital as any of the work that you do. You need to be in, in good shape mentally. But when you come along as well, and you and you come for the trial, you, you you really need to shine. You need to you need to bring your top game. You need to bring your A game. Really, trials. You know, it, it can be a, the odd moment that catches catches people's eyes. I, I know I've done enough of it selection and I've worked, you know, scouting at, at good levels and at the top level really and spotting players and spotting people for tours and for Alex Ferguson's most wanted tour. And, you, and you're looking in, in these moments that catch your eye. Don't come along and be safe would be my main tip. Don't come along and give 10 yard balls all day long because I can still do that. <laughs> you got you got to shine, you've got to show me something different. You try and look at a very rounded thing, you, you look at people's distribution, you try and look at their movement, you look at their control, you look at their agility. So, so my, all of my tests would be based around all of those things and then of course putting that together with match play because you, you can get some very interesting results that some of the people who will shine on individual tests won't shine in the match and, and vice versa. Often the game passes a player by purely for the system, or for the other people in the trial, or the opposition, etc., etc. You know, and I'm sure that in the past players have been lost on trials purely because of that. So if you if you give that mixed mixed teams, mixed systems of play, then, then you're giving people the best opportunity really to show what they've got. And of course, the other thing, we can all have a bad day. So if they have a bad half on the trial, that sometimes that's the end of them. Here they can you know wipe the slate clean and go again. So so I think the idea is sound. Yeah. Good luck to all the players who will come along, and it is about players really. Coaches just kind of, and managers all help you along, but it is football's about players. So, yes, yeah, so good luck to everyone.